Hi, my name's Tom, and I'm from the internet. <laughs> I was a shy and nerdy child. At the age of eight, I wrote my first computer program. And as the internet opened up to the world in the 90s, I felt the possibilities were immense. We were no longer shackled by existing societal constraints. We were building a new space based on equality and freedom. The internet was a force for good in the world. And I've spent the last 20 years building the internet at companies like Skype and The Guardian. I believe that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. That is as true today as it was when it was written in 1948 at the top of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it is as true online as it is in the physical space. But rights abuses happen online too. Ed Snowden showed us that national governments were snooping on our every move on the internet. Everyone, more than 20 million Australians. Software that I had worked on was being misused to spy on you. How much have you used your phone just today? Each of us spends 10 hours a day putting our most personal and private information into the cloud. But the digital policy debate is dominated by the same companies that hoard and monetize our personal information. They exploit how our politicians don't understand how the internet works. Where does this take us? In 2016, the government mandated that your personal communications be stored for later retrieval by a vast number of government agencies. Last year, Centrelink leaked the personal details of a single mum in a smear campaign and there was no law to prevent this. This year, we expect the government to introduce legislation to compel technology manufacturers to break their own systems to provide access to your personal messages. This sort of legislation must be stopped. That's why I co-founded Digital Rights Watch with the help of these amazing organizations. We mix my tech skills with the legal knowledge of people like Lizzie O'Shea, who stopped the Mukti nuclear waste dump, and the organizing power of Tim Norton, comms director for the Pew Charitable Trusts. Digital Rights Watch provides media analysis and commentary. We educate the public at events like Melbourne Writers Week, and we provide training to journalists, politicians, and campaigners. The next step is to start writing laws that strengthen our human rights, not erode them. A citizen-led movement is the best way to ensure that our rights are respected and strengthened. We will nurture this movement and amplify its voice to help our politicians make better decisions. We've already raised $20,000. This year, we plan to raise $150,000 which we will use to amplify our effectiveness. More media with greater reach, closer collaboration with our partners and supporters, and accelerated campaigns. Next year, we will raise an additional $300,000, which we will use to grow our movement, empowering us to set the digital agenda in Parliament. Today, I would like to invite you to support us financially. Together, we can rebuild the digital environment to celebrate and strengthen our fundamental human rights. Thank you.